Hi everyone, in the previous video we went over the formulae for using an AC circuit, an alternating current circuit. These were the formulae that I taught you all about and I did three practice examples in the previous video, so go check that out. In this video we're going to tackle some past paper questions, some exam questions based on this. This is the question that we'll be doing together and it comes from a final paper, November 2021. The first two questions were general questions relating to the generator itself, which is not the focus of this video. So we're going to be doing 9.3 to 9.6 in this video. Let's get to it. The first question, define the term RMS potential difference. You need to know this definition off by heart. And as stated in your exam guidelines, that is the definition for RMS potential difference. My next question is asking me to calculate the RMS current in the circuit. Now, just to read over here, it says a simplified diagram of an AC generator is connected to a 25 ohm resistor and the coil rotates anti-clockwise. Now, the rotation of the coil was important for question 9.1 and 9.2, and I go through this in a separate video. So the only important information from this is the 25 ohm resistor. Then the other bits of information that I have, so so far I have a 25 ohm resistor. The other bits and pieces of information will have to come from the graph. Now, if you can recall, this is a graph of EMF or potential difference voltage generated over time versus time. So you can see, you can read from the graph, this 100 volts and here it's negative 100. That is V max, the peak of the curve, your maximum or your peak voltage 100 volts and that's all i have and now we want rms current so i rms it's always a good idea to list what you have and what you need then what is also important to note like i said in the previous video is there's a formula that is not displayed on the formula sheet and that is r is equal to v over i if you want to use v max you must use i max if you want to use v rms you must use i rms now this is an interesting formula for me because I have V max and I have R. So just go with me, do this with me. Obviously, I hope you're trying these questions by yourself before doing it with me. But now that you're doing it with me, if I make use of this formula, so this is Ohm's law, by the way, but I'm just adapting it to use for an AC circuit. So if I, if I write R is equal to V max divided by I max, I can substitute in the following. I know that my resistance is 25. I know my V max is 100, I'm looking for I max, the maximum current. Remember, if your variable that you're looking for is at the bottom of the fraction, so here it is, it swaps places with that one. So I max is equal to 100 divided by 25, which is equal to four amperes. Now take a look, we have I max, and what the question wants is I RMS. Once you have I max, getting I RMS is very, very easy and straightforward because you just need this formula over there. So we first have to use Ohm's law to get I max. Then once you have I max, we make use of I RMS, the following formula. I RMS is equal to I max over square root two. We sub in. So I max is four divided by square root of two. And my calculator gives me two root two, which you must write to two decimal places. 2,83, at least two decimal places, 2,83 amperes. My calculator says 2,8284, but we round it off. You can to at least two decimal places. So this question is actually worth four marks in your final paper. And where do you get your marks? In this case, they give one mark for both formulae. In other words, if you're missing one of the formulas, you don't get that mark. Then one mark for substitution here, one mark for substitution here, and one mark for the answer. My next question says calculate the average power. Remember that is P average, P of, dissipated in the 25 ohm resistor. So, so far we have that resistance is 25 ohms. We have that V max, maximum voltage, peak voltage is 100 volts. In our previous question, we also calculated that I max was 4 amperes. So I can use that over here. I max is four amperes, and we also have I RMS. We calculated that as well. That was our final answer, 2,83 amperes. So let's take a look at the formulae that we have. This graph is not going to give me any additional information for this question. So if you take a look at the three power formulae, this one, this one, and this one, and you're trying to consider which one would be best based on the given information, I have resistance 
and I actually have IRMS, I calculated it previously. So this one would actually be a nice, easy one to use. So formula first, I squared RMS multiplied by R, I squared RMS, it's 2,83, square it, and R is 25. So if I make use of this formula, I get my power to be 200,22, or my calculator says in full, 225 watts, powers measured in watts. You can round it off, but again, my calculator gave it to me to four decimals, so I can leave it to four decimals, but round it off would be like that. Let's say you preferred to go a different route. Let's say that you were maybe eyeing this formula over here. You may use that formula. So P average is equal to V squared RMS, divided by R. And you might be saying, but ma'am, we don't have VRMS, but we know that we can easily calculate VRMS if we have Vmax. And we do have Vmax. We can make use of that formula. So then you would have to complete it in two steps, but I just want to show you that you get more or less the same answer. The reason I say more or less is because there's a lot of rounding off that happens in between questions. So for example, in my previous one, I used a 2,83 value over here, which was my IRMS answer from a previous question. This is a rounded off answer which I am allowed to use because 9.5 is a different question. So I am allowed to use it as rounded off. But if I had to make use of this formula, then my answers may slightly differ. So let's do it. Vmax is 100 divided by square root 2. You can get that value, which is 50 square root 2 or 70 comma 7106781212. Note how if I decide to go this route with using this formula and then this formula, I'm not allowed to round this off because I'm in the middle of a question. So what I will do is if I want to make use of this VRMS value over here, I'm going to just keep it as a third, 50 square root 2, and then we square it because of the formula, divided by R, which is 25. And when I do that, I get exactly 200 watts. And you'll see here, according to the positive, the marking guidelines for the final exam, here are three different options, depending on the formula that we use. You see that you get very similar, but not identical answers, depending on the formula that you use. And they will accept any of them, as long as you always give your blank formula, sub in, answer with unit. For our last question, 9.6, remember this up here was given in the question. This was the original question. Then they state the following, the speed of rotation of the coil in the generator is now doubled. Very important, speed of rotation is now doubled. Copy the set of axes below in your answer book, so they're referring to this, and sketch the graph of out output voltage versus time for 0.1 seconds. So, can you see that the original graph here, starting here and ending here, that represents one full rotation of the coil. And remember I showed you, we can do it with our hands depending on where the magnets are situated. So say for example, we've got a magnet here and a magnet here, and then our coil is in the middle. When my coil is in this position, the vertical position or the perpendicular position, that's when my voltage is at a zero. So that would correspond to this part of the graph, the zero, zero part. Then, so it goes from here, then it rotates, then it's flat or horizontal or parallel. That's when my voltage is at a maximum. So it's here, then it goes here, then it goes here, then it goes there, and then it goes back to its original starting position. As you can see, that would be one full rotation. So what you currently see on the screen is one full rotation of the generator. In other words, from here to there and back to its starting position. That's one full rotation. But think about it. If I um, move the generator or spin the generator twice as fast, if I double the speed, then... It won't just be one full rotation in the time, in the 0.1 seconds. It will be two full rotations. I hope that makes sense. So the first thing that you have to consider is if I double the speed, we double the frequency. Okay. So remember, frequency is the number, when we learned about frequency in grade 10, we said frequency is the number of waves that pass any given point in a second. So if we double the frequency, then we're going to double the amount of waves that pass a given point at a, in a certain time. So if we double the frequent, the double the speed, we're doubling the frequency. So frequency is going to go from F to 2F. And remember, period and frequency are inversely proportional. So the normal period, remember T is the symbol for period, will go to half of what it was. Remember, if you don't know why that's true, remember this formula, frequency is equal to 1 over period. 
Okay. So if I double the frequency, then I'm halving the period. These are inversely proportional. Period is at the bottom of the fraction. And remember, if this ever confuses you, sub values in. So say, for example, frequency, or let's say period is 10. Then the frequency, what is 1 over 10? 0 0.1. If I want to double the frequency, if I want to times this by 2, then that's going to become 0 0.2. So then what must the period become? What must this number be in order to make this 0 0.2? Yeah, that number has to be 5. 1 over 5 is equal to 0 0.2. Test it on the calculator if you don't believe me. So you can see that the, the relationship is inversely proportional. And if you halve the period, what that means is the time it takes for, for one wave to complete is going to halve. So at the moment over here, and this is all like connected to trigonometry as well, at the moment it takes 0 0.1 seconds for one wave. So 0 0.1 seconds gives me one wave. When I double the frequency and therefore halve the period, one wave will no longer take 0 0.1 seconds. It's going to take half of that time. So one wave will then take, you divide it by two, it'll take 0 0.05 seconds. Yeah, that's where one wave will end. So for example, it'll go something like this. Oh, it's supposed to curve, something like that, but I'm not done yet. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is one full wavelength used to fit in 0.1 seconds the time is 0.1 but now because we double the speed double the frequency we have to halve the period in other words half the time that it takes for one wave to finish because we need to fit two waves into the same time but that's not the only thing that changes remember based on our knowledge of generators if we move the coil faster if we rotate the coil faster you should know that according to faraday's law of electromagnetic induction what it means is because we are reducing the time that it takes to complete one wave, time is going down. So EMF, the voltage that is being produced, is going to increase. It's taking less time to make one full wave. Remember, in this graph, one wave took 0 0.1 seconds. But when I double the speed, I double the frequency, one wave is now going to take half the time, 0 0.05 seconds. You just divide it by two. Okay. That means the EMF is going to increase. So notice how the maximum voltage went to 100. Now, because I'm doubling the speed, it's going to double the maximum voltage produced. So this is what your graph is going to end up looking like. You see, originally it reached its half rotation. So it rotated halfway at 0.05. We have to halve that. So it's going to reach half of its rotation at 0.025. In the first graph, it finished its first rotation at 0 0.1. Now it must finish its first rotation at 0 0.05. So halfway between here is where it's going to reach its peak voltage. And halfway between here is, go is going to be where it reaches its peak voltage in the opposite direction. So this is going to be one rotation. That's one rotation. But remember, they wanted me to do the graph for the full 0 0.1 seconds. So then we go again, it's going to reach a second full rotation. So here it's gonna go up to 200 again, then it's gonna go here, then it's gonna go to negative 200 and back to zero. So can you see the original graph had one wave in 0 0.1 seconds, now it has one, two waves in 0 0.1 seconds because I doubled the speed. I'm rotating it twice as fast. This is quite a difficult question. So you need to remember that if you change the speed of rotation, not only are you changing the period of the graph, okay, how long it takes for one rotation to be complete, but you're also changing the maximum voltage because of Faraday's law. I hope that that was helpful. I'll see you again in another video very soon. Bye everyone.